Hello everyone, my name is Decker Link, the Trained Unprofessional, and I have been waiting to make this video for a long time. I've mentioned it a couple of times here and there, but I finally get to announce it and let you know what the fuck I was talking about. Uh, back in 2016, I f flew out to California with the help of a longtime friend of mine and someone I've been a fan of for even longer, uh, Austin Stevenson of the channel Whatever We Want, uh, to uh, cameo in his independent film Hammer Boys. It is a horror comedy, kind of a sketch comedy thing. It's uh, it's kind of it's kind of uh, it's it's a dark comedy kind of thing. It's lighthearted, but also it's fu filmed beautifully. It's a weird film to describe. I mean, it's it's a short independent film, but it can still be called a feature. It's uh, 48 minutes long, almost 50 minutes long, somewhere around there. And I'm only in it for a couple minutes total. But uh, and I, I do this god-awful pseudo-British accent. I don't really know why. I'm dressed as The Undertaker from WWE. Um, but uh, I had a lot of fun going out there. And I wanted to tell you all that it's finally been uploaded. Independent films take a long time to produce and to edit and color correct and all that other stuff. Uh, and so it, it took three years. It took three fucking years. But it's finally done and it's out uh, right now on the Whatever We Want channel. The link is in the description. Uh, let them know that I sent you there and let them know what you think of the movie after you've seen it. Hell, let them know what you think of the movie before you've seen it and then after you've seen it. Leave multiple comments. Go fucking nuts. Do whatever you want. Tell them what your favorite sandwich is. Just go nuts. Have a blast. Um, so... Uh, but just bear in mind, I, if you're looking for me in a movie, no, that, that I am just a cameo. Um, but I did want to, now that I have directed you towards that, if you want to hear a little bit more about the story behind me getting out there, I'm going to, uh, just kind of talk about it. I don't have a fucking script. I just kind of wanted to, uh, describe my experience a little bit and, uh, talk about the whole thing because it was a kind of a big moment in my life. Kind of. It fucking was, man. Back when I lived in Admire, uh, my only friend basically was the internet, and uh, I fucking, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube and uh, playing games by myself, but it transitioned to watching YouTube primarily for the longest time, and I stumbled upon a YouTube channel called uh, Rich Alvarez, which uh, did a series called uh, Stupid Mario Brothers. And it was a live-action parody of, like, young, the, the young Mario Brothers, but doing stupid stuff, and it slowly developed into this big thing. Um, and it's one of those series that was uh, good for the time, but upon looking back, you're just like, holy shit, I watched this? Uh, and there were still good moments, and they did a lot more with it than they <laughs> probably had any right to, but uh, it was certainly fun to watch, and it was... Uh, it was definitely a product of its time, but uh, one of the things about that was there was this large cast of characters, and it was just this group of friends all making YouTube videos together, and one of the segments uh, of the cast on that channel came from a channel uh, called Random Productions. I'll put a little... There we go. Random Productions. Now I can do a screen and screen. They did uh, some, some random sketch stuff. They did... Uh, small bits here and there, uh, usually de delving into the nonsensical or the uh, straight-up absurd, but they were still funny, and it always came across that it was just friends having fun making videos together, and it was just a great time. Now I'm transitioning back over here. So, uh, why I mention this is that uh, I was going through a really tough time in my life, and... You know, I was having health problems and social problems, and it was just a big fucking mess. Uh, to say the least. And so when uh, I started watching them regularly, I was seeing all these friends having fun with each other and having a good time, and so I decided to reach out. I wanted to thank them for <laughs> a kind of... They weren't... I didn't want to describe them as, like, the friends I didn't have but felt like I did. Like, when you were watching those videos, and the bloopers especially, you really felt like you were just there having fun with them. Um, but it was just a good time all around to, uh, to watch the videos, enjoy them, and have fun. 
And so I reached out and uh, told them. I did more than I really should have, honestly. I, I found, like, their personal Facebook pages and messaged them. That's not what you should do. Never do that. That's a terrible fucking thing to do. And the vast majority of people that I reached out to that way did not fucking respond either well or at all to that. Um, but uh, I did get a response back from Austin. Austin Stevenson, who is the uh, lead... Uh, lead actor in this film uh, he was also the director and uh, he and I started talking and uh, he, over the years we talked about different things that was happening with them the channel their group of friends uh, and we kind of talked about what it would be it would be kind of fun to work with each other because you know I was doing YouTube videos and I had all these ideas and they were doing stuff that looked fun and finally, when it came uh, to the point where they were doing, you know, full fucking feature-length films, um, the idea of me coming out and being in one of them uh, as a side character or a cameo, uh, I couldn't commit to being out there as a full main character because I live in Kansas and they're in California. Um, but, you know, doing something, maybe some sketch video, maybe something... Uh, it was always something that we, that we talked about, thought about, and uh, eventually it came to pass that we could do it. In 2016, they were uh, developing Hammer Boys, and um, we figured out that financially we could work it out in their budget and my budget that uh, I could pay to uh, get me, if they could pay to get me out there, and I could pay to get me back. Um, and uh, that just came to pass. So I have now officially gone to Florida in the summer and California in the summer. The worst time to go to the hottest places, but I did it. And it was my first time flying on a plane. I did, I had a, a connecting flight. Uh, and so I was going through airports by myself for the first time. I had been in airports before, but like only picking people up or dropping people off. I had never actually gone through the process. Um, so that was interesting. Um, but I figured it all out and I got there just fine. And I learned that I absolutely hate going up and coming down on planes. That fucking sucks. Especially the coming down bit. Because it just feels like you're free falling. Because planes don't go... Mm, no. They go... <laughs> it's a fucking mess. And I don't like it. But uh, eventually I got out there. And Austin picked me up. It was actually... I'm skipping some shit. Uh, like I mentioned, my character in the movie is dressed as the Undertaker from WWE. And for those who don't know what that looks like... Uh, first of all, watch the fucking movie. Uh, second of all, watch The Undertaker. He's phenomenal and my favorite, my favorite uh, wrestler. Um, but thirdly, uh, he wears an a, an Amish-looking hat, black flat round rim, uh, and a very long black leather trench coat. So I'm wearing a lot of heavy shit going to California in the summer. Um, but imagine that outfit going through an airport as a big guy I'm like 6'2 6 6'3 6 I'm also heavy set uh, and I'm carrying a backpack uh, and I had checked luggage too so I probably looked the most suspicious <laughs> oh god I uh, there was one time I was going through and no one came up to me and no one had me go through like special searches or anything um, but I couldn't like pack the coat and anything because it's so big that like, I couldn't I couldn't store it anywhere or else I'd have to bring another fucking bag and on Southwest you can only check like one bag I think um, and then you're allowed one carry-on bag so I had to wear the fucking thing through the airport on the planes um, I've got a lot of weird looks but that's what I learned you just gotta smile act nice be friendly don't let anyone think you're a bomber so uh, no one ever, no guards ever came up and were like, hey, what's with this? But I had some just saddle up to me. They would stand right next to me, but they would look like they're just looking around. A couple times they'd be like, hey, how's it going? So, uh, what's, uh, what's going on with you? <laughs> 
And so I'd explain to them, I'm going to film a movie, and this isn't my normal outfit, yada yada. And eventually I'd talk to them and everything would be fine. So I get out there, Austin picks me up. First thing he does is take me to a bar. And I should have seen this as a trend, but <laughs> you don't see things as a trend the first time it happens. Um, we spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time in California at this bar called, uh, Slingshots? Slings, maybe? I don't know. It's in, uh, Cameron Park, I think. It's a good bar. Uh, spent a lot of time there. The problem is, and I, this is, okay, I'm about to get some real TMI on you real quick, so you don't want to fucking hear that, just saying. Uh, I was battling, a uh, hemorrhoid at the time. <laughs> and I was using the wrong stuff to treat it. But the stuff I was using would manage it for a little while, and then it would get bad. Um, and so I had to apply it every time I used the bathroom, and uh, in the morning, and before I went to bed. Um, turns out, if I had just used the bright stuff, I'd use it a couple times, and the problem would be gone. Uh, so, silly me. <laughs> but, uh, nonetheless... I spent a lot of time sitting on bar stools. And another big problem was that uh, at this time we're uh, dealing with m movie sets and stuff and uh, there was a large section of time I spent in California where we were actually staying on set which was a rented house in uh, the, the fucking bugs flying around me uh, in I believe it was Somerset, the, the forests. This is Northern California, I believe, um, and we rent. There was a rental house, no internet, uh, no cell phone signal. A couple people did, but I sure as shit didn't. Um, and so I was out in the middle of nowhere with no support system. I wasn't on the right medication for my hemorrhoid nor my mental problems at the time. Uh, it wasn't until much later on that I actually was put on antidepressants. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I was not in a good place. Uh, especially since our well went dry a lot. Because the movie required a swimming pool. And in the forests, up on the mountains, uh, you don't exactly have sewers running through there. Uh, pretty much all your water in the summer especially, is run out of wells. And those wells are very limited. Uh, and so we had to actually run our uh, well dry a couple times to fill up that pool. And that pool stayed clean for approximately one hour. <laughs> but it worked. And uh, But I mentioned the water thing because uh, while I was at the... Uh, the rental house, I did maintain uh, a, a decent amount of cleanliness, I believe. I showered regularly. It was a, this cool open shower. Um, there was you, It was just a walk-in. There was no ledge or anything. It just dipped down in, into a drain on the floor, and the walls for it was just curtains. Um, so it was actually pretty cool. But uh, when we weren't there, uh, Austin, his house was kind of very remote out in the woods and so not every night we would go all the way back out there some other times we would stay at other people's houses friends houses uh, hotel once and uh, the problem is is that I didn't carry my hemorrhoid cream with me everywhere I went um, because you know we didn't really know if we were going back to the house or not and so we're in summer in California, uh, and if I'm not where there's a shower or a change of clothes around regularly, I'm getting sweaty. I fucking hate being sweaty. That's just me, though. That That's me personally. I just have a problem with that. Um, and then I'm away from the thing that makes sitting down easy, uh, being the hemorrhoid cream. And I, I'm, I'm really mentioning that mainly to mention that I had a good time out there. It's sounding like I'm bitching a lot, and it's because I am, but none of these things are major problems. It's that there was a lot of small things. <laughs> the hemorrhoid cream, the not washing very often, not getting to change your clothes every day, uh, being without uh, communication a lot, 
not having the proper support system, not being on proper medication, a lot of the, and being at a bar a lot, which for a person with anxiety uh, isn't always the healthiest place to be. I was not in a good place. Uh, and I felt really bad for a long time about how I reacted to a lot of this stuff because, you know, there'd be a lot of times at the bar where I'd be talking to someone, they'd be trying to cheer me up, and I'd have to go off by myself for a while. And uh, I felt like I was, you know, being a downer or letting people down or, or in general just not being pleasant to be around. Um, and... There were times where I was kind of expected to do more on the set, uh, though I was never... <laughs> it was weird. I said I was going to do more on the set, and some members of the crew, I won't mention who, but some members of the crew, not it wasn't Austin, took that to mean that I was going to be the bitch boy that did all the heavy lifting and all the hard work. Uh, and uh, I did not appreciate that. Because I want to help my friend, but I don't know thing one about, uh, you know, how to properly store lenses and shit. Like, I have have had one film school class that wasn't even in a film school. It was just in a regular uh, university. So, I'm not the biggest film set buff, and I'm not the most enthused about it. But, when people take... I want to help and turn it into you're lifting my shit and carrying it everywhere I go. No, I'm not fetching your fucking coffee. I'm not carrying your fucking bags. I will help where I can and where I uh, where I'm available. But if you are taking that as an excuse to do no work and instead put it on me. I don't no, I, I don't fucking do that shit. Um, like I said, Austin didn't do that. Uh, none, of the, I think, none of the people that, uh, and it wasn't even that big a deal. Like it happened a couple times, and once people realized that I wasn't going to be the fucking errand boy, uh, it didn't happen much. But like I said, it was just a bunch of small things that put me into a bad place mentally. And so I wound up sequestering myself a lot. I spent a lot of time in that rental house when I wasn't uh, filming or doing something else. I spent a lot of time in the bedroom that I was staying in. Um, editing a lot of videos that aren't even online anymore. Um, and honestly, I feel really bad about that. Because I feel like I wasted a lot of time. But at the same time... That point in a lot of people's lives was kind of a turning point. I mean, at that moment, um, there was relationships being made. There were relationships that were being ended. And I was meeting a lot of new people. I was meeting so many new people, some that I'm friends with now, some that I have fell off with. Um, and honestly, there was no way that I feel like I could have done everything that I that had an opportunity to do and not go insane because I wasn't out there for a week I wasn't out there for a fortnight I was out there for a month maybe it was a month maybe two months something like that. I was out there for a long fucking time um, and so I, I needed some time to myself and if every night we're going to a bar and every night where, uh, you know, I'm sweaty and my asshole is on fire and I can't sit anywhere and I'm... So, yeah, that was... Basically, I'm building all this up to say I felt really bad about how I handled a lot of things and if there's anyone who was on that set that felt like I wasn't doing things uh, in a good way or that I was being... Uh, unpleasant or difficult to deal with, I apologize. That all being said, I still am very glad to have actually done it. I met a lot of cool people, I had a lot of cool experiences, I learned some good things about being on a film set, like every time you have an idea, you don't just randomly start saying it and then get disappointed when no one wants to hear it. Because there was a lot of times where people were trying to figure out how to do a scene 
uh, and I would come out of nowhere with some random fuck idea, and they'd be like, no. <laughs> or they wouldn't even respond. Um, and I would start to get upset about that, and then I think it was the, the prop guy mentioned, like, dude, these people have worked on this script for, like, a year, and I get that you're you think your idea is good, but not all... You can't just randomly say some shit and expect it to land with people who know the context, who know what's going on, uh, especially if it doesn't fit with everything else. So I learned a lot of good lessons from that. I saw people with a lot of experience at work. I also saw a lot of things that I feel like I can learn from to not do. Um, and overall, uh, just being out there and getting to meet someone that I've uh, enjoyed watching for so many years and meeting all these new people and uh, getting to know them and getting to go to another state and fly on planes and do all of these experiences that I had never done before, you know, experiences are the most valuable thing you will ever get out of life. Because you can buy all the things you want, you can accumulate all the wealth that you can. Nothing is ever going to stack up to experiences. You can't buy those, you can't sell those, you can't replace those. Those are the building blocks for a satisfied life. And I'm very glad to have had this experience. You know, this movie isn't fucking Citizen Kane, but I've seen Citizen Kane, and I'll tell you, even Citizen Kane ain't fucking Citizen Kane. It's... It's a funny movie. You gotta take it lightheartedly. It's shot really well. I really like the cinematography in this. There are good lines. There are good moments. Uh, it's good. It's not... You know, it's not... A masterpiece of the cinema. I use that line because I had a literal class this semester called Masterpieces of the Cinema, which was a load of shit. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for something lighthearted, kind of funny, a little bit silly, uh, pretty to watch, this could be it. And I hope you enjoy it. And I'm glad to have done it. I look forward to possibly having the experience to work with these people again someday now that I'm in a much better place mentally and physically. And uh, I don't know if it'll ever come to pass. Um, everyone is less financially stable than they, we were before. But uh, I think we're all in better places. At least it would seem so. And uh, yeah, so... I hope you enjoyed the movie. I hope you enjoyed listening to my little diatribe about it. Uh, if you did, let me know uh, in the comments and do all the things that YouTube tells me that I have to tell you to do with the buttons and the liking and the sharing and the whatever. Um, and until next time, ladies and gentlemen, fare thee well. Bye, everyone! <laughs>